Good morning, everyone, Good morning. and everyone here and online. So a couple of announcements this morning. The Love Our Seniors Luncheon will be held February 14th at the Fellowship Hall at noon. Uh, Baptist men will hold their monthly breakfast meeting on Saturday, Saturday February 18th at 7.30. Uh, that same February 18th, we'll have the Mount Airy Bowling Lane. We'll be at the Mount Airy Bowling Lanes at one o'clock for the Duck Pin Bowling. Um, St. Mary's has a pancake dinner coming up on February 21st. It's open to everybody. It's from 6 to 8 p.m. and donations are welcome. Um, are there any other announcements? Seeing. All right, need it? Come leave it. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Those here and online, let's enter into worship singing our uh, call to worship number 134, O Magnify the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in you, God. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. Psalms 43, he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Jesus, 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 the sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Join me as we sing our next uh, worship song, number 148, He Keeps Me Singing.
Psalms 156 tells us, let everything that praises, that breathes, praise the Lord. Let everything that breathes, praise the Lord. Psalms 134 2, lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. Let's lift our hearts to heaven and praise the Lord. Join me as we stand and sing number 145. Let's just praise the Lord. We'll sing it through twice. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you today in praise and thank you for our time in your house. Clear our hearts today, Lord, to receive your word. We ask for guidance with our daily walk with you. Lord, we pray and give thanks through the prayers your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in your responsive reading found in your bulletin or online. It comes from uh, multiple sections of John and Isaiah. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the Christ shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. It is he who, coming after me, is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to lose. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. The sun shall no longer be your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you. But the Lord will be to you an everlasting Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning, church. It's good to see everybody this morning as you come together and again worship the Lord God Almighty. And I too want to welcome everybody online and glad that you're joining us today um, through that opportunity of service. Today's a good day as we come to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Sunday's a day that I look forward to where we can come together. And, and Zeph and I, in our message in our Sunday school this morning, it talked about being sold shoulder to shoulder, side by side, um, as we worship our Lord Jesus Christ. And in this world that we live in today, with all the hurts and all the evil and all the wrongs and, and everything that's around us, it is awesome to know that our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our faith is in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our joy is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And with him, all things are made right. Amen. Uh, it doesn't promise us a life that's not, does that, that does not have disappointments or hurts. Tribulations will come. The Lord Jesus said himself, they're going to be there. But we need to read the rest of that verse. Amen. 
for the Lord spoke loud and clear, but I have already overcome the evil. I have already gone ahead of you. I've already made a way, and I will not leave you. Man, what a joy. What a blessing. And that's why we can sing, Jesus, 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 the sweetest name I know. I'm just really excited about what everything that the Lord is doing. I have great news to, to announce to you today for our brother Billy Appleton. Uh, him and I went for our monthly ride. We really enjoy that. We, had, we, I tell you, I tell you every time we solve all the world's problems on the way down and back. When we get back, the Lord could come because everything's good. Amen. But uh, the doctor gave him some great news. Said he was doing wonderful. He doesn't have to come back for two months, not one month. And that he was doing better than he expected. And Billy immediately said, and I'm not saying this to brag on Billy, but I am because he's my brother. Immediately, Billy said, to God be the glory. And that's what it's all about. Amen. Throughout this whole ordeal, the gospel has been shared, I know for a fact, at least with that doctor. Um, and he knows, and it doesn't shock me that the Lord has healed Billy the way he has, just to back up what Billy has said. Amen. Um, to bring strength to your words. That's enough preaching. We'll get to that in a little while. But uh, God is good in all that we do. And I do celebrate with my brother. Um, I really do. Um, in the good news uh, of what's going on in his life. Uh, it's Luke's birthday today, too. So you can all say happy birthday to Luke today when you leave. And Michael's here. Michael Odin's here. Uh, I think he's here for a dinner, but that's all right. He's here. And uh, But, you know, Sandra said, no church, no dinner. So, you know, that, that life's good. Uh, but, no, Michael, it's always good to see you come out of the woods once in a while and come on down and uh, be with us. God is so good. All that being said, it's time for us to show our, our thankfulness through our giving. Um, you can give online. You can mail your gifts in as there's envelopes in there even today. Just mark giving on the envelope. It's not open. It's placed in a plate on Sunday and gathered. The online goes right to uh, our treasure. Um, and again, it's for the glory of God that we do this. So I always say, don't be faithful to the Barnesville Baptist. Be faithful to God Almighty. Amen. And he's the one that will bless you in every way. So, um, Eddie and Ellen and Megan and all of them are at Lars this weekend um, celebrating up there. And uh, so um, Eddie's not here. So I think I'm supposed to. Well, who's doing this? Oh, I'm coming down there. All right, here we go. Don't we pray? Yeah. All right, let's pray. All right. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity right now to give a portion back what you've given us. Lord, may it all be used to your glory and to bring others to the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. And we praise your name. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Jan. That was beautiful. It really was. Isn't it good to have beautiful music? Amen. Brings us closer to the Lord. Let's all stand as we sing our doxology. Just for a second. Okay. You have to be aware what Tuesday is, right? You know? Valentine's Day. That's if I turn mine off. Tuesday is Valentine's Day. Um, and so we give out Valentine's. Um, I have one for you. Can you read that aloud? This is my commandment that you... Oh, <laughs> this is my commandment that you love one another ju just as I have loved you. John 15, 12. Good. Now, one of my favorite movies is The Shack, and it's about uh, this man's encounter with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And God is always saying, I'm especially fond of him, or I'm especially fond of her. Well, I'm especially fond of you, so I have another Valentine. <laughs> Can you read that one? <laughs> Let all that you do be done in love. One, I don't know how to say That's okay, don't worry. We know it's from the Bible. All right, I am especially fond of you. I have another. <laughs> because I can't read cursive. No. You can't read cursive? <laughs> all right, don't worry about it then. All right. I'll take the mic back there. Um. Now, do you know who St. Valentine was? There's, um, there's not much written history about St. Valentine, but there were actually three. Uh, the first was a priest and a physician in Rome, and he helped Christians being martyred by the Roman emperor, emperor Claudius II. Eventually, he was arrested also, condemned for his faith, beaten, and beheaded. The second was a bishop, who was also arrested, beaten, and beheaded during the reign of Claudius II. Then the third. Who was killed in Africa for his faith. Um, nothing else is known much about him. Um, and then there's also a story that Valentine was killed for secretly marrying Christian couples, which was forbidden. Now, not all of this has a lot of written history about it, so... Um, we don't know much about any of it, but it says all were examples of church preachers who loved God more than the emperor to the point they were willing to give up their life. And a day was dedicated to remembering that sacrifice. Now, the romantic part of St. Valentine's Day really wasn't attached until the Middle Ages, which is a long time ago, long time after St. Valentine, but a long time ago. And it's thought that that was because um, birds were believed to couple up to make new babies in mid-February, and so romance is in the air. Although the exact origin of the holiday is not widely agreed upon, it's widely recognized as a day for love, devotion, and romance. Now, there are different kinds of love. You have romantic love, love for a brother or sister in Christ, love for family, and agape, which is God's unconditional love. Jesus talked a lot about love. He said that if we were fighting with someone, we needed to settle our argument before we could have genuine worship. He said that if we hated someone in our heart, that was the same as murder. Wow. Just, dis just hating someone is like killing them. That's a lot harder 
than being nice to our friends. We can't do that on our own. We need Jesus to help us love our enemies, and we can pray to God to help us. Love is very important. The Bible tells us that God is love in 1 John 4, 8. And in 1 John 8, 3, 18, it says, My children, our love should not only be words and talk. Our love must be true love, and we should show that love by what we do. Now, God showed his love for us before we were even born. In that famous verse, John 3, 16, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. God gave his son so that whoever believes in him may not be lost, but have eternal life. He sent his only son to be tortured to death so we could live in heaven with him forever. He did this for everyone before we were even born. Our words have to match our actions if we really mean them. Romans 5, 8 tells us that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. In this way, God shows his great love for us. But how do we show our love for him? The Bible tells us lots of ways we can show God our love since he first loved us. When we listen carefully to what the Bible tells us, we learn that we can love God best by loving other people. Now, this is something that Pastor Danny often says when preaching the sermon to the whole congregation. Do you think the people in the congregation agree when they hear the pastor say that we need to show our love of God by loving other people? I think so. I think everybody here agrees with that. Now, let me ask you a question. Suppose we had a sermon today. We should show our love for God by loving others. And then at the end of the sermon, the pastor asked all the people in the congregation who agreed with what he said to hold up their hands, sort of a vote to see who agreed with what he said in the sermon. And suppose every hand went up. Now, that would make Pastor Danny feel good because that meant people were really listening. <laughs> and it would tell him that people were agreeing with what the Bible says. But then suppose everybody got up and left church without saying a word to another person and got in their car, driving off, snarling. And when at the next car they met, did something they didn't like, they yelled bad words at the other driver. What would you think of that? <laughs> it might mean that everyone had forgotten his or her manners all at once, but I doubt it. That would tell me that everybody was willing to talk about loving others, but not ready to do anything about it. To do something about it, we need to treat others the way the Bible tells us we should. We need to treat every other person as someone also loved by God. God did not make any junk. It means to go out in our daily lives and treat people the way we want to be treated with love. We know God loves us from the way he treated us from the very beginning. God loves us with the very best kind of love that unconditional love, agape, because he loves us no matter what we do. Even if we don't love him back, he still cares for each and every one of us. We can take comfort and hope in that, and we can know that he will help us when we ask for help loving people who aren't nice to us. So let's pray. Mm -hmm. Dear God, on this day of worship of you, we all want to love as you have commanded us, and it can be really hard. Show us how. Give us the strength and the courage to do so. We love you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Now, I have, it's not homework, but some, <laughs> some kind of fun things to do. So. You're welcome. Thank you. Amen. What a good lesson about love. Uh, there's no greater love than the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. For all of us. Do you know, I, I was thinking this week, and um, I've had occasion to speak to a couple of different pastors this week on different things, and one of the things that keeps coming up is, uh, in this country, how we use the word love in, in, a, in a very loose way, so many ways. You know, I love some Reese Cups. But Reese Cups didn't do anything to die for me to help me to have an amen. Um, the point I'm making is this. There is no greater love than the love of Jesus Christ, the unconditional agape love. 
And I believe uh, in, in different cultures around the world, love is, uh, is um, set apart, except for the, the greatest definition of it, um, example of it, which is love of Jesus Christ and love of God Almighty um, and the love that a family shares. Amen. So I pray that we will remember that, uh, yes, there's times we wish we would have been better, spoken better, thought more, all these different things. But love conquers everything. And when you say you're sorry with a grateful, repentful heart, love heals, love provides, and love moves on. Why? Because Jesus gave us the greatest gift of love himself. So anyway, thank you very much. That was a very good lesson on how we should love each other. It's not in your bulletin, but we have a surprise blessing today. Uh, Nita uh, has been practicing. Tom's told me that he's, she's been practicing on him. And uh, she's coming today to, to uh, play something in her hand um, and to lead us to the Lord. Um, a mini piano or something. So uh, praise the Lord. This is a melodica piano, and I'd like to share with you um, Jesus, lover of my soul. It says in Psalm 17, 8, hide me in the shadow of your wings, and Jesus does do that. He uh, is with us in everything we do and in everywhere we are. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you, Jesus, for loving us and caring for us. Amen. Let me try it one more time. Amen. Thank you. That was beautiful. Amen. I'd be using an inhaler three times just to get through it. Amen. Couldn't help but to think next time we'll get Gary up here with the trombone. And we'll just, we just go to town. So uh, we uh, 
we uh, just enjoyed that very much. So let us pray. <clears throat> Father, I thank you for this morning, for the opportunity to share your word, to look at your word, to fellowship and share with each other. Lord, I pray for your healing power to heal every relationship within our church body and our family. I pray that you will receive the victory for all things, that Satan would never receive the victory in anything, that you will receive all the honor and glory. I pray for forgiveness and healing and love. I pray that we will always remember, no matter what our differences might be, you, Lord Jesus, created us, sustained us, died for us, rose from the grave for us, and we will spend eternity with you. Thank you for the lesson this morning, Zephaniah, that the words you gave Zephaniah that said all things will be made right, rebuke will stop, evil will be defeated, sin will be no more, and we'll enjoy the supper with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, I pray for everyone here that they know who Jesus is and that, Jesus, you are their Lord and Savior, that they have personally asked you into their life because once they have you in your life, Lord, hope and peace and joy is real. It's everlasting. Even when we fail, you're there to reach your hand down and pick us up. We're secure in you for eternity. And one day we will be shoulder to shoulder with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And Zephaniah said we are to shout hallelujah. So church, hallelujah. Amen. As we go forward. Amen and amen. Last week, we started our study at looking at the person of Jesus Christ, looking at who Jesus Christ is now, who he was, who he is, and who he will always be. We're going to continue to go deeper into God's word, and we're going to look at the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1 through 18 today, to finish up that passage about the picture that John gives us, how clear Jesus, who Jesus is, what Jesus is, what he always will be, and what he means to you and I. My prayer is that we will leave here having a better understanding of the depth of God's love, who sent his son Jesus Christ to give his life for you and I, who left heaven in all its glory to come to this evil, filthy world. Fully God, fully man. He set aside his attributes, his deity full intact, and yet he walked this earth. There's not a temptation or hurt that comes your way that our Lord has not experienced and our Lord has not conquered. He has given us the greatest example ever on how to be a child of God Almighty. And that starts with our relationship and it ends with our relationship with Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. We saw in verses 1 through 5 how Jesus has always been God and always will be God. But we also saw in those first five that verses last week how Jesus is the light of the world. And this is very important. Please listen for everyone here and online. Jesus is the light of the world, but the rest of that verse is very powerful. It says the world had not overcome him had not overcome the light. The darkness does not destroy the light. It is the opposite, amen? The light destroys the darkness. You and I, we get caught up in our emotions. We get caught up in our woes as me's. We get caught up in our hurts, our, our selfish desires, our pride, all these things that every single one of us, I'm not immune to that. Every one of us get caught up in our selfish desires, our pride, or, or that we think we're greater than all. But when it comes down to it, we can be humbled in a minute by the evil one, Satan. We can be brought to our knees and help in family relationships and, and, and uh, other relationships and financial relationships and uh, just evil itself all the way around. And Satan's desire is to destroy us. Satan's desire is to distract you. Satan's desire is to get your eyes off of Jesus Christ and center him back on yourself as woe is me. When the Lord Jesus Christ reaches down, he doesn't give you a lecture. He gives you forgiveness. He gives you love. He gives you new life. He gives you new hope. He gives you a fresh new beginning. Lessons are come because that's part of who we are. We'll never learn if we don't have a lesson. But the lesson is shared in love, not in evil. Can I get an amen? It's sent in love 
and it is, is demonstrated in our lives in love. The lesson is so that we will grow stronger in him, so that we will be able to fight off the evil thoughts, the evil desires, the evil uh, tricks and plays of Satan himself. And the reason we can do that is because as we go through trials, as we go through situations, we need to remind ourselves, we talked about this in, in Sunday school, Zephaniah was very clear. We talked about how evil has come, evil is part of life, evil has affected us in every way. But when we realize who it is that dwells within us, the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the only way that can occur is by you personally asking Jesus into your life, by you personally confessing, Lord Jesus, in, in some way, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins, not everybody else's, forgive me of my sins, forgive me of my thoughts, forgive me of my evil. David said to himself, Lord, I have sinned against you and you alone. And then he repented. But after he repented, and after, he asked the, after we asked the Lord Jesus to come in our lives and to, to, to take away our sins and to, to be our Lord and Savior and recognize and acknowledge that he is God Almighty and was raised from the dead for our sins, we are then new creation, made whole, new in him. Our past does not define who we are. It's our future who should define who we are. And our future is bright. Can I get an amen? As a believer in Jesus Christ, your future is not devastation. Your future is not failures. Your future is not condemnation. Your future is not hell. Your future is heaven. Your future is to suffer with the Lamb. Your future is being embraced and, and, and glory. When we see the Lord Jesus Christ and with our glorified bodies and everything's made right. Your future is good, bright, and full of hope, joy, and peace. One of the things we said today, which I want to remind every one of you, in our Sunday school class, and we had a great class. I, I think we, I don't know, I think we had four or five in our class this morning. And one of the things we talked about was let's think back in our life. And let's think about that devastating moment or broken heart as our health or finances or or crushed in our spirit when we thought the world was caving in. Can I tell you something? You're still here. You're in God's house today, worshiping him. You are here in the hope and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you something, Christian? You made it. You, 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 you overcome that in the power of Jesus Christ. Nothing's changed. Our Lord is the same today as he was yesterday and will be forevermore. So when the crisis comes back, remind Satan. Remind yourself. Hey, I've been here. I've already received the victory and I'm going to claim it again. Amen. But can we learn a lesson along the way? Jesus always taught a lesson. Not out of anger. So that you would be stronger. More effective. And honor God more in your life. Jesus is the light of the world. And the light was not overcome. We need to remember that. We also affirmed or agreed that Jesus is pre-existent and he is continuous existence. His pre-existence and his continuous existence. Jesus always was, always will, and always has been, and always will be. He is God. We also know that he was fully God, co-equal, co-eternal, co-existent. He is fully God and his deity is intact. I remind all of us of that truth once again. So that when you call on the name of the Lord for help, come on, man, let's read Psalms over and over again. Read the whole book. You're going to hear it over and over again. I called out to the Lord for I know where my help comes from. And you know what you're going to hear after that? And he answered me. I want you to know today, and I want to remind myself who it is who's answering me. Jesus Christ. Fully God. Who walked this earth and was tempted and tortured more than we will ever know. None of us will experience the pain he experienced. But I know one thing. Through that pain, came victory for all mankind. If we believe in the name above all names, Jesus Christ. If we call on the name above all names, Jesus Christ. 
I want to tell you here loud and clear and straight and forward, there's not a pastor or a priest or a man or woman who can save you. All we can do is point you towards the one that can and celebrate with you on your decision to call on the name of Jesus Christ. We can pray and we should pray, but you must choose. I must choose. So let's turn our attention now to the rest of our study in chapter 1 of John. We're going to look at verses 6 through 18. Now let me just share something quickly with you. On Wednesday nights, if, you have, if you're not able to come on Wednesday nights, it's on our Facebook page. I encourage you to listen to last Wednesday's service. It was on the book of John, and we're studying John 1. But we talked about the book of John, the gospel of John. We talked about the epistles, John 1, 2, and 3. And we also talked about Revelation, the book that John, God had, Holy Spirit inspired to write all those books. And we talked about the role that they play. I tell you that for this reason. Hear me now. If you read the book of John, the epistles of John, 1, 2, and 3, and the book of Revelations, you will get an absolute clear picture of who Jesus Christ is what he's done, why he came, and what he's still doing today and what he'll do in the future. God chose John to lay out the whole map, the whole directions uh, laid right out there. So if you haven't uh, attended or heard that on our Facebook page, it's great thing about our Facebook page or all of them is that they're recorded there for, I ain't going to say forever because who knows, but they're recorded there now. Um, so you can watch and listen to that. So let's start John, the book of John, the gospel of John, chapter 1. 6 through 18. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. In other words, John was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, light being Jesus. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, Jesus. The world did not recognize Jesus. He came to them that which was his own, but he his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, all who call on the name of Jesus Christ, all who believe in the name of Jesus Christ and confess their sins to Jesus Christ, back to verse 12, yet to all who did receive Jesus, to those who believe in the name of Jesus, he gave the right and the joy and the privilege to become children of God. Can I get an amen there? Thank you. Children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. All right, verse 14. The word, the word, Jesus, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father. He was full of grace and truth. 15. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said... He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. One of his fullness, out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, is in closest relationship with the Father. He made him, he has made him. No. Oh, boy, there's a lot into those scriptures. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Verse 6 and 7 gives us an insight of also who John is and his relationship, the, the beloved one, as he calls himself, the one that at the end of his gospel says, if I wrote everything Jesus said, none, no books could hold it. He, he, he followed the, the writings of the Holy Spirit, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The Bible is written by human author, but the, the words, the thoughts, the the intent, everything that's there is through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit through God's own spoken word. He, John, gives us, it gives us a picture of John who came as a witness, crying out to the world, introducing everyone to the living incarnate Jesus, the Son of God. Then verses 7 and 8 also gives us a clear picture just how important it was to John. Please hear this. This shows us a clear picture of how important it was, John, that he made it clear that he was not the light. See, when you and I, when we demonstrate God's love, when we share the love of Jesus Christ, when we do evangelism, when we live a life that, that speaks volumes, the greatest witness you will ever say, the greatest witness you will ever portray, the greatest story of Jesus you will ever show is with your mouth shut, and it will be through your life's actions. Can I tell you that? 
Sometimes we, I wish we all kept our mouths shut, amen, and only let, only let our hearts speak because uh, Peter and a bunch of them tell us real quick what that tongue can do, amen, and I'm a firm believer of that, and I failed at that many times. I believe, and I still believe with all my heart, the greatest witness you'll ever have is by how you live, how you act, and how you love each other. Love conquers everything. So John said very clearly, he wanted to make sure it was very clear, I am not the one. I am not the light. I just reflect the light of my Savior Jesus. Verse 7 again, he, John, came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Okay, why do I say all that and emphasize that again? Boy, we can let pride get a hold of us, right? Boy, look at me. I'm the greatest Christian there is. Look at me. I got the Bible figured out. Look at me. I, I'm the one interpreting it. Look at me. I'm the holy blessed one. Let me tell you something. All that will do nothing but hinder your walk with the Lord. It's displeasing to God. It's dishonoring to God. And it will ruin relationships everywhere you go. We must be like John. And simply say, I am not the light. I am not the perfect one. I don't have all this figured out. But let me introduce you to the one that has. Jesus Christ. Let me introduce you to the one that does have it all together. Jesus Christ. And let me introduce you to the, the one I love with everything in my heart, soul, and mind. Jesus Christ. Wow. In other words, John said, don't look at me. <laughs> I'll send you down the wrong road. Look at Jesus. Follow Jesus. And believe and trust. So as we read on through the book of John, 9 through 13, God shows us the redemption plan. That's why whenever someone comes to know Jesus, the very first book you should hand them is the book of John. The book, the Bible, but direct them to the book of John. John in the New Testament will explain to them who they are, what they are, their new life, what they what happens to their past. Everything is answered. God covered it all. Boy, ain't we glad we have an amazing God. Amen. The book of Gospel of John shares a good picture of who Jesus is. So let's look at John 9 through 13. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He, Jesus, was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to what which was a, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, Jesus, to those who believe in his name, Jesus, he gave the right to become children of God, saved, forgiven, Christians, whatever you want to write there. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will. Well, John's clear, isn't he? You're born new because of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of beauty in that. There's a lot of truth in that. If you're tired today of struggling, if you're tired of the past always being thrown up in, in your own thoughts, I'm not talking about people. Come on now. People are people, and they're not going to, there's always going to be someone who's going to remind you of who you used to be. I learned something this week. I really did. I've been taking, again, as you know, I've been taking refresher in course in seminary. The one this week, this month I'm taking, it, or these, this quarter is um, on evangelism. And I thought it was going to teach me a bunch of ways to teach you, Roy, how to evangelize. Guess what? It's called personal evangelism. Changed the whole thing. First thing the professor said, I'm not here to teach you to how to teach and share this. I'm teaching you how to live it. And I'm like, wow, okay. Can we pass this? <laughs> Can we skip this one? I said that for this reason. Ain't none of us perfect, amen? We all have things we need to work on. But the point I want to make is this, very clear and, and, and very straightforward, is that when we become a child of God, when we know that we are saved by the saving grace of Jesus Christ, there's only one opinion that matters in this world for all eternity, and that is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Who do you say he is? In other words, even greater, who does Jesus say you are? Is he going to say, welcome home, my good and faithful child? Or is he going to say, depart from me, for I did not know you? 
God's word said there's going to be many who are going to say, I preached in your name, I taught in your name, I prophesied in your name. Jesus is going to say, I do not know you. Depart from me. Why? Because you've got to have a personal relationship with the one and only Jesus Christ. You and the Lord have to be one. It's called being in Christ. The only way to be in Christ is ask the Lord to allow us to be in Christ. And then all the blessings of victory of being in Christ, all the co-heirs of heaven, all the victories of Satan are all yours because you are in Christ. Because you have called on the name above all names. Verse 14, the word Jesus became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father and full of grace and truth. Incarnation of the word. Incarnation of Jesus Christ himself. Hear me again, because it's important you understand. It's important that I understand. It's important that we remind each other who Jesus is. That's why I believe this study about who Jesus is is so vital. We're going to be challenged like we've never been for, before in the years to come, or in the days to come. We're going to be challenged in our faith in Jesus Christ. We're going to be challenged in our stand, and I believe we're going to be challenged physically and emotionally and spiritually for our faith in Jesus Christ. So we really need to know who Jesus Christ is and what he is and what he's done for us. And not only that, the power and authority that he's given us through Jesus Christ. Jesus became flesh and blood. He dwelt among us. He was not just a man. Flesh and blood. When they put those thorns on his head, he bled flesh and blood. Precious blood of Jesus. The difference being, though, as it ran down that filthy cross at Calvary, our lives were changed with every drop that was spared. If we just will call on his name, if we'll just trust him, no one of us, not, not one single person on this earth who's not in heaven with the Lord has it all figured out. We're going to have different opinions. We're going to interpret things different. We're going to have different things that, that, that bother us. We're going to have different likes. We're going to have different dislikes. We have all kinds of different things. Sometimes, I've said before, sometimes I think the Lord laughs when he creates us and says, I'm going to make this one like this one. I'm going to put them together. That's just my opinion. My wife's been saying that for 44 years. I say that for say this. When the Lord God died on the cross, when we are coming to him in heaven, when we are take our last breath, when our soul is to him, God sees us through his blood, the Savior's blood. When we call on the name of Jehovah God, he hears us through his blood of his son. He responds. He hears us. The importance of this lesson, the importance of this study is so that when we say he hears us, we know who he is. He's not a pastor who you think maybe can pray with you and can walk with you and love you and provide for you and even argue with you and dispute with you and all these things. We could do life together, but when it comes down to it, there's only one authority. There's only one that has it all together. There's only one we are to listen to and to follow, and that is Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? That is the one and only. And he left the greatest example. No greater love there is until a man gives his life. While we were yet sinners, he gave his life. Come on, we got to know who this man is. This God. This Jesus. Not just man, but flesh and blood. Not robed in flesh. Incarnated. Real. When he wept over Lazarus, the tears were real. When he bled, his tears were real. At Gethsemane, when he prayed and the tears dripped from his body of blood, they were real. When they nailed the hands to the cross, the pain was real. When they nailed his feet to the cross, the pain was real. 
when they put those thorns on his head, the pain was real. When they beat him and whipped him and spit upon him, spat upon spit, whatever the right word is, they were real. But when he said, Father, forgive them, that was real. That was from his heart. Hear me, that was for you, and that was directed to me. It wasn't for one person. He didn't say, forgive the Roman that just put this on my head. Forgive them all, Father, for they do not know what they are doing. Today, you, my man, will be with me in paradise. And I hate to say this, but I think in my heart, in his heart, and my heart breaks for you, who will not. Jesus died for all mankind. It doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter what drug you in here today or what made you turn on the screen and, and read this, listen to this program, this service. Because it's all ordained by the Holy Spirit or you wouldn't be here or you wouldn't be watching. God never stopped stirring the hearts of his people. Why? Because redemption is his desire. Forgiveness. To be reconciled. Not to teach you a lesson or to shame you or to beat you down or to be right. Not to feed your pride. But to humble you. To realize no matter what you've done, Jesus said, I created you. I sustained you. I died for you and I rose for you. There's nothing you can do to change that. But you can do everything to make it right by calling on the name above all names. Hear me now. Jesus Christ is the only one who can forgive you and save you and make you right. Or if you're tired of living the life you're living, if you're tired of all the shame, if you're tired of all the hassles, if you want to wake up one morning and like what you see in the mirror, it starts with your relationship with Jesus Christ and its source is Jesus Christ and the last breath on life will be a thanksgiving to Jesus Christ. Not me, not our neighbors, not our deacons, not your wives, your husbands, no one else. That's all blessings. It, it only matters where you stand with Jesus Christ. I heard it said once, and I want to share it again now. Through everything God has ever done, for every comment Jesus made through his word to us, the one that matters the most is this. When we see him face to face, and every single living being will, My prayer is that he'll say, welcome home. Welcome home. My child, my brother, my sister. Welcome home. When we're held accountable, he's not going to ask you about the man behind you. He's not going to ask you about the person you sat next to in the pew or spent your whole earthly life with. He might ask you about your works and deeds and what we did with that. But when he asks the question that matters the most, do you know me? Do we have a relationship? Am I your Lord and Savior? He's talking to you and you alone. The answer is very simple. Yes. And the other answer is devastating and sad and breaks my heart. No. Go back to the cross, church. Go back to the cross. Jesus, he already knew what was coming. He already at this point had his hands nailed, his feet nailed, his thorns. He'd been beaten. All these things. He knew without a shadow of doubt his father was going to have to turn away because of his sins. He knew the biggest burden that would ever come in his life would take on all of our sins. And yet he stopped for a moment in all that anguish and all that pain. You want to talk about humility? You want to talk about humbling yourself? He stopped amongst all that was going on. And he turned around and he testified and witnessed one more time to the people next to him. And he said... You will be with me in paradise. Why? Because he acknowledged the Lord Jesus and he made a relationship with the Lord Jesus for all eternity. The other one did not. In all that pain and anguish, I have no doubt the hurt in God's heart was more for the man that did not than the man that did yes. 
Jesus longs to have a relationship with you. With you. We will fail him. We will make bad choices. We will dishonor him. But I just say thank you, Jesus, that he looks the attention of your heart, the motive, the desires of your heart. If you intentionally desire to hate, to be angry, if you intentionally have a motive to be prideful and, 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 and jealous or, uh, I don't know, there's a million things. If you intentionally turn off the desires of the Holy Spirit to stir in your heart. And folks, I need to tell you straight and forward, your reward will be hell itself with Satan himself for all eternity. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to go that way. And we don't have to live a life full of tension and anger and sadness and brokenness. We can live a life Let me ask you a question. When Peter stepped out of the boat because he had faith in Jesus and walked on that water, don't you think Peter's emotions were way up here? And then when fear stepped in or sin or whatever you want to call it, when he turned his eyes away from Jesus and started to sink, fear overtook him. You don't think his feeling of gratitude didn't go out the roof when Jesus reached down and pulled him back up. And he didn't just pull him back up out of the water. He got in his boat with him. There's a big difference. We can pull a brother or sister up and then condemn them to death. We can criticize them. We condemn them. We can gossip about them. We can make fun of them. We can say we're going to pray, but we don't. We can do all that. What Jesus desires is what he's done for all of us, to reach out a hand, pull them up, and get in the boat with them and make it right. The only thing that matters is that we're a witness to, of our loving, saving grace of Jesus Christ in our lives. John said it best. If you read 1 John, he starts out the beginning by saying, I touched him. I saw him. I heard him. I ate with him. Jesus is real. He wants to make sure. The gospel of John. He was. He is. He is the only begotten son. Revelations. All through the book of Revelations. The king is coming. Epistles 1, 2, and 3. Be ready. John, the salvation plan. The epistles. The path. Revelations. The celebration. You want to know where you're walking with Jesus and how that life can be? Read the book of John, the epistles of John, and Revelations, and get your praise on. Because it ends with hallelujah. Man, God is good. We got to know who it is we're serving. We got to know where we stand. And we got to know who God is. Throughout the scripture, last page almost, Luke, Throughout this picture, we see his uniqueness, the one and only begotten Son. Jesus is the decoration and the explanation of God. Can I say it again? Jesus is the decoration and the explanation of God. God has declared him, God has explained him, and God has made Jesus known. Can I say it again? God has declared Jesus, God has explained Jesus, and God has made Jesus know. His only begotten Son. The more we know and learn about this man, Jesus, this God, Jesus, this Savior, Jesus, the King of Kings, Jesus, the more we'll know about our Heavenly Father because they are one. Man, come on, church. God is so good. Please embrace him. I know there's some here today struggling. I know there's some online that are struggling. Church, I'm struggling. I hate when I do things that are against what I know God wants me to do. But the greatest part of that is I can get up in the morning after repenting, after praying, after doing everything I can, and I can smile in that mirror and say, you are not only a good-looking fellow, you're in good shape with the Lord today. And Cindy affirms it. <laughs> and Billy walks out. Isn't God good? 
told you, I had a good friend of, man, friend of mine tell me once, the mirror is your, best, your best friend. I hope you like what you see. In other words, don't look at everybody else. Look at yourself. If that's good, the rest will work out. All right, I want to end with a, some, it'll be on the screen. I just found this writing. I think I've shared it before, but I thought it was kind of interesting how to end the book of John. Next week, we're going to Hebrews. We're still looking at the person of Jesus. We're going to remember, we're going to look at four books. The book of John, book of Hebrews, book of Colossians, and book of Philippians before Easter. Because I want us to be ready for Easter. When Easter comes, I want to make sure everybody knows it ain't about no bunny. It's about Jesus Christ. It is about the Reese Cups, all right? But it is not about no bunny. It's about Jesus Christ. So that's my goal uh, the Lord's laid on my heart. So here, just hear those and read along. Jesus began his ministry by being hungry, yet he is the bread of life. I, I, I want to read these to you because I want you to fully understand when you call to him, he knows not only who you are, he's been there. That's why I want to read these. I want you to know you're calling on a Lord who knows what it means when you call for whatever it is, he can say, I've been there. But I've also given you the victory. Remember that. Jesus began his ministry of being hungry, yet he is the bread of life. Jesus ended his earthly ministry by being thirsty, Yet he is the living water. Jesus was weary or tired, yet he is the one who gives us rest. Jesus paid tribute. Honor the government, honor your leaders, yet he is the king of kings. Jesus was accused of having a demon, yet he's the one that cast out the demons. Jesus cried or wept, yet Jesus is the one who will wipe away our tears. Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver, yet Jesus redeemed the whole world. Jesus was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Yet he is the good shepherd. Jesus died, yet by his death, he destroyed death itself. Do you know Jesus today? Is he your Lord and Savior? If you're tired of living the life that you're living and you want a new life with new hope, if you have fears and dis disappointments or addictions of any kind that's overcoming you and it's, it's just destroying you from the inside out, there's only one source of help and relief. That's Jesus Christ. There's only one source of victory, and that's Jesus Christ. And I want to put one other word of wisdom in. God just gave it to me. It ain't written here, so it ain't wisdom for me. So now you have to listen because it's from the Lord. We're awful quick to forget what he's done too, right? How many of us has God gotten us out of the pit of hell? Salvation, the greatest gift. How many of us have God gotten us out of court? Out of a health issue? Out of a marital issue? Out of a domestic issue? Out of a legal issue? Out of a friendship issue? Out of a job issue? And we prayed and we earnestly prayed and he delivered us. And we praised him for a little while. And yet today... We seldom say thank you. And yet he still loves us. If someone did that to you and me, we wouldn't talk to him ever again. But you know what I love about my Jesus? Just like Peter, he reached down immediately, God's word says. He got in the boat immediately, God's word says. And God's word says he taught him a lesson, so keep that in mind. Amen? God is good. Don't go back to your old ways. Don't go back to your own thoughts. Don't go back to your forgetting what Jesus has done for you. Yes, your salvation is secure. But he deserves more than that. He deserves our gratitude every moment of every day. Church, you don't have to stand there and list everything he's done. I'd, I'd be there for weeks. Can you imagine if we had to list every morning everything he forgave us for? He doesn't want that. He wants your heart to be pure. Your thoughts to be pure. And he wants your actions and your motives to be pure. That's all he's ever asked. Love me. Confess, acknowledge me, and be holy as I am holy.
Lord, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Lord, I know even now there's ones amongst us that are hurting online and maybe even in here. I pray they'll give their life to you, Jesus. Very simple. Forgive me of my sins, Lord Jesus. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. I know you died on the cross for me and God rose you, raised you from the dead to give me new life. Guide me, direct me, Holy Spirit, empower me. Anything of that nature, your word says, confess, repent, believe with a pure heart and you shall be saved. Lord, I pray that for everyone here that's listening, even overseas and Pakistan, Cuba, and wherever else this message might go. Please protect this church body, the fellowship of this church body. Please give me a pure heart, pure thoughts, and pure motives. And let me be grateful every day for what you have done in my life and what you continue to do and for the ones you put in my life. Praise your holy name. And God's people said, Amen. If you don't know where you stand with the Lord Jesus Christ, see me, please. The song we're singing today is Billy Graham's Call to Worship, Just As I Am. He didn't, is that what we're singing, right? Yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> if not, Jan would have to be flipping pages. You can always tell when I change it, when her fingers start going a mile a minute and her smile drops a little. But uh, Just As I Am, I, every time I hear that song, I think of Billy Graham, all right? I, I mean, I think of Jesus now. Don't, don't hear me wrong. But I... Don't, doesn't that connect the two together? Why? Because Jesus, Billy Graham preached a simple message. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Where do you stand with Jesus today? Please, if you have any questions, call me. Email me, pastordanny at live.com. It's on, on here, I think. A lot of phone numbers on here. No, the email, you know. Uh, my email is pastordanny at live.com. It's private. No one reads that. You can text me. No one will read that. Um, but it doesn't matter if you text me or call me or email me. It's the Lord you need to speak to. Um, but I would love to work on that journey with you. Amen. Please know where you stand with the Lord. Neither will you come lead us and then Luke will dismiss us, please. Thirty-five. I'd like to sing uh, one, three, and five. Let's stand. One and two. Okay, one and two. We'll take. Stand, please. Thank you for your time today, and thank you for bringing us into this house, your house, Lord. Please guide and direct us as we uh, go about our ways today and this week. We thank you for all the love that you put in our hearts and our minds, and let us take the word that we heard today and just share it amongst others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all very much. Amen. Amen.